Hey guys, today I'm gonna to take you on a tour with me. I've already met with customers on a home that they purchased. It's a home that I did not build, but it's over 10 years old. They just recently purchased the home and they have gone through and made a list with our interior designer what they would like to change. So I'm gonna show you some of the difficulties as a home builder when you go through and price out a remodel because it's not a gut job that I'm used to. This one here is bits and pieces and they're going to make up some decisions where they're gonna paint the whole house. They wanna remove some light fixtures. They want some new countertops. They don't like some of the fireplaces. We wanna update some of them. There's a lot of little things that I have a whole long list. So I'll take you through and show you what's involved in creating a list of items. So when the homeowners meet with me, it's not one big number. It's kind of like a menu of items that they can pick and choose. So to do that it takes a lot of work in the front end, a lot of subcontractors that I have to meet with, painters, plumbers, I gotta meet with tile setters, I gotta meet with some demo guys, I met with the fireplace people, so a lot of that's going on. Let me take you guys through the house and show you and let me know what you think because this is a modern house and they're gonna switch it to what they call more of a modern or more of a mountain luxury. They're gonna take all the grays and go more earth tone, so let's get started. Hey guys, a little update on the neighbor's dog. Remember, his name is Patch. He's this great big white Pyrenees. Well, he not only is he a thief, but he's been taking our mail. This was sitting on our front porch and there was a note on it. The neighbors brought it back and said, sorry, Patch brought this home. Please give us a call, we'll pay for it. Well, come to find out, my wife has ordered some stuff for Christmas and it came. Here's the plastic bag. Here's the UPS box. We had to look and see what exactly what was missing. Well, it was a nice little shirt that we ordered for Christmas. Patch chewed a hole right, right through it. So not only is he stealing stuff, he is ruining our Christmas, that crazy dog. Anybody want a uh, white Pyrenees dog? We'll be glad to ship him over to you. He's great at protecting stuff and taking stuff from the neighbors. He was doing great when he started bringing back our laundry clean, but now he's starting to ruin brand new Christmas gifts. Okay, as you all know, the backbone of a house is the kitchen. That's the most important part of a house. And not only is the, you have to have three things, I always tell people, curb appeal. When you drive up, the house has to look nice. Secondly, the kitchen. If you don't have a functional kitchen, you will really have a terrible house. You will not like it. And then third, the master bedroom, primary is what they call it now, the nice bath, the suite area with the bedroom, living area, closet. So we'll show you all that. But right now I'm in the kitchen, so let me show you some things that the uh, new homeowner does not like, and I kind of agree with them. There is two islands in this kitchen, and they start with this one little tiny vegetable sink. So there's a reason why this sink is so small, because there's an appliance, a steam oven right here, Okay, by having this oven right here and access, we don't have the ability to make this sink sit over here. So we're gonna leave the sink, but I think what we can do, there's all kinds of new stuff that's out. You can do these long linear sinks that go at, and we'll encroach in on the cabinet on the back side. There's no stools on the back side of this island. They're all on the second island over here. They also are going to remove all the granite. That's a color that they don't like. We're gonna leave the floors, all the tile floors in the house are staying. So this will all get demoed, get cut out. This island, this island, and then the back island. What I found out with the homeowner designer is they want to add, there's only one oven in this house. They have the small steamer, steamer oven. They have the regular oven, warming drawer. So we're looking at taking this out and dropping in a range oven. So the concern I have is this is all gas. There's Oven's called dual fuel. You have to have a, a gas top and then you need 220 for the oven. I'm looking into it right now and I believe there is one on the high-end Thermador's and, and uh, Wolf where it's called just all gas oven. So, because we have gas here. Remember we have a hot button on pot fillers? Look at this thing, guys. This pot filler is on the countertop. My hot button with pot fillers is, I just don't think they make a lot of sense. They're nice and convenient, but if somebody turns this on, the water just runs on into the appliance. I find that crazy with all the rules and regulations that I have to deal with every single day that a pot filler has slipped through the cracks. But anyway, we're gonna tear all this out 
this backsplash comes off and this pot filler is gonna go where it's supposed to, on the wall. See how low this is? Some pots, this can't even get underneath it. So that's a bad design. We're gonna fix that. So we're gonna start focusing on the kitchen. They do not like the black cabinets. The bad part about that is these are riff cut oak. Riff cut oak is very expensive. It's real fine lines. And so we've had our painter come in and look at this. We wanna change this color to a more of a natural. Remember we're going for earth tones. So we thought we could sand this down, but it's a veneer. A veneer is literally a thin piece of paper almost that they've put on these cabinets. And even though it's a, it feels like a big solid door, they just wrap that door, that piece of um, composite wood with this wood veneer. So if we sand it, it's going to come off. So now I've met with a cabinet guy. He's gonna come in and take all these doors off throughout the whole house and replace them with brand new doors. By doing that, we're able to save what we call the boxes. These boxes, what we'll do, because the hinges are so tight, it's a European hinges, you really don't see the, this box. So we're able to paint that as close of a color as possible that matches the stained wood. So that'll be uh, a cost savings without totally gutting the kitchen and replacing it. So there's one way that we can get a whole new look and not spend a whole bunch of money because kitchens are so expensive. That's one of the items. Let me go work on some more for you. With the two island kitchen, this has become the seating area. We're, they're planning on leaving the height. So this is bar stool height. And then the next one is stool height and then chair height. So this is at the 42. Your kitchen counters are always at 36 and a kitchen table is at 30. So those are the numbers, 30, 36, 42. Sometimes people like one level so that you can lay stuff out, but we're going to leave this. But all these countertops come out. Every sink in the kitchen and faucet is coming out. All new is coming in because we're putting in all new countertops. One situation that we have to deal with because we're putting in all new cabinet fronts and we're going with the lighter stain. I have to visit with the cabinet guy. These are the ends. So I gotta make sure that the homeowner is okay if we paint this. Otherwise, we have to do what we call is reskin all this with new raw wood, which is that rift cut oak. So these are some questions that I will keep. And when I meet with them, I'm saying, hey, we know we can fix some of this stuff, but there's a couple of different ways it can go. So it's not always cut and dried. So I had to think this all the way through when I meet with them and give them these options. So again, this is a very modern house, all the gray colors. So they repeated this rift cut oak. It doesn't may not show up in the camera, but that's that black stained rift cut oak. That's a color that needs to go away. And to keep costs down, we're gonna remove that glass and fill it in maybe with some more rift cut oak but then this will get painted, probably a complementary color to the kitchen. That's a very expensive thing to replace. So what the designers are doing is we're gonna put a new light fixture in, and then we're also replacing all, actually all the light fixtures in the entire house are coming out all but one. I'll show you that one, it's entryway, that one stays. So all this shiny chrome is going away and all new fixtures are coming in. All right, in the kitchen is a hearth room. This is really where the family hangs out. They get these super sized houses. This is probably six, 7,000 square feet. And what's amazing is you live in the kitchen hearth room. So out of all that square feet, you're pretty much living in about a thousand square feet of it, maybe less. So this modern style fireplace is all tile and it's even been recessed for a TV, which is fine, but we're gonna come back and put stone, a real cultured, not a cultured stone, but real stone that's a veneer that we're gonna stick on this. But the fireplace, the homeowner would like to find a way to put log set inside there so it doesn't look so modern. I've met with the fireplace guy who put these in originally. I didn't build this home, so I was able to find that guy. I use him on my jobs. A lot of builders do that. We do share a lot of subcontractors. So he is pricing out what it's gonna to take to update this fireplace to meet the homeowner's needs. Another thing I just found out that the homeowner would like is for me to design and put a mantle on here. Being at Christmas time, you gotta find a place to hang your stockings. The, another part is we already have power up here for your TV, and if you wanna put Christmas lights on here, I always like to find a way to make sure there is an outlet so when you hang Christmas lights and wreaths and things on your fireplace, you don't have to run an extension cord all the way across the room. It literally just hangs on here and it can quietly plug in behind the TV. So those are little fun little tips. Little tensions of details. This house, again, is all chrome and silver. So these floor vents, they're actually 
silver, they're, pla they're plastic, I'm going to replace all these with a different color so that it disappears and goes away. This is too modern for the homeowner. So there's, oh, gotta get that to go in. There, when in doubt, push it out. There's several of these throughout the main floor of the house. All those are going to be replaced. Let me take you through and show you some other things that we need to work on. All right, continue with some of the modern look with this house that we're trying to get rid of. These doors are solid rift cut oak. A nice look, even though we're, it's a modern home, we're going to a different style. We're gonna keep the doors black since these are very expensive doors, but the glass insert panel, we're gonna take those out. There's about six or seven of them in the house. Instead of replacing the doors, my idea is we'll take the glass out and every glass has a stop. There's a little trim piece on both sides. So we're gonna remove the glass, get a piece of rift cut oak, put in the middle. We'll stain that to match and then put these stops in. That way they can save the doors. They do not like this hardware, the color. So I gotta get go through the house, count every single door in the entire house and the hinges and get them all replaced with a new style. So these are brand new, nice stuff that gotta find a new home for them. But since we're talking trim and doors and hardware, let me show you the steps. Over here, going downstairs, here is something that's very modern. This is a stainless steel railing and they're throughout the house. So I have to replace all these with wood. And there's another one upstairs where there's, instead of um, spindles typically on stairs, let me show you, the glass panels are coming out this way. All right, as you make your way upstairs, this modern look, all glass, very elegant, looks nice, but not for what we want to do here. So all this is getting removed. We're gonna put in new wood rails on top and then come up with an iron spindle. So the key there is when we're pulling these out, these brackets we have in here need to find a wood post that matches that same size because now we're back to filling holes. Those are little things that people don't think through that even though we're pulling this out, putting in something else, typically we don't have a second newel post. Typically just have one right here and that's it. So we got to add a second one so that we can hide all the bolts into that area. When I'm meeting with the painter, when I'm painting these people's homes, we inherit a lot of issues. Here is some damaged drywall. There's a thing called nail pops. It's where the nail actually screws kind of work themselves out. You have to come through with a hammer, hit them, and then drywall over them. I have to go through the entire house because as soon as we paint all the walls, you will see any imperfections and especially going with the lighter color. These are all smooth ceilings and walking through the house, we have already found some fine cracks. We also have found a couple of uh, water spots. This home actually has a fire sprinkler system in it, which is pretty much unheard of on residential. And there's a few of them that have leaked and caused some water damage. So that all has to be fixed prep before the painter can start. And then there's also some woodwork damage around windows, casing from the vacuum cleaners and just wear and tear through the house. So if we painted everything, those dings and dents will show up. So we have to go fix all that. And it's hard to find those. And when they show up is when you're starting to paint the house. So trying to get a painter to bid everything, but at the same time, he wants to make sure when he paints the house, it looks perfect. Pretty much everything is all new. And there might be a few little problems, but on residentials, we've got 10 years of wear and tear here that we have to find. Okay, now I'm actually in the dining room, which is right off the front entryway. This has served its purpose. This white stone behind here is all coming off and it's like a display niche, it's beautiful. It's got lights, again, rift cut oak, which we're keeping. What we're gonna do is pull this out and replace the back with new rift cut oak and then all this will get painted a new color. There's wallpaper on these walls will have to get removed because again, we're trying to get rid of all the grays and lighten up this room, especially since it's a focal point right when you walk in the front door, it's really gotta make a statement. Okay, making the way to the other end of the house where the master suite is. Again, we have these glass doors. These are several of them. I gotta replace the glass, take them out. Here's like a corridor that comes in. These niches, I used to put a lot of those in way back in the day. Decorators hate them. So now what we're gonna do is remove this thing and reason why you're limited to decoration on this wall, artwork, what have you, to just this looks like three foot by four foot. So if we fill this all in, make this go away, now they can put some big dramatic artwork because it's visible from the entryway, plus it's going into the primary suite. I said master, I can't get used to the new words, but you have a choice to make. You can go this way to the bathroom or this way to the master bedroom. Let me show you a fireplace in the master that we're going to try to update. All right, coming into the master, we have this 
kind of a sheen on the walls. It's a, like a Venetian type plaster. The painters and the designers have to figure that out, how to make that go away. We're gonna paint over it. But this modern fireplace has this glass panel on it, which is just decoration. We're probably either gonna remove this and find a way again to put more gas logs inside this. You're hearing that beeping. We don't know what the heck it is either. It's the house is empty. It's probably part of the alarm. But let me show you what the doors are going to look like when I take the glass out, I found one. See how that panel, this would be glass, and we're gonna replace it with that rift cut oak, and it's got the little stops, so all the doors in the house will look just like that. Hopefully it will be an easy fix. Let me show you the master bathroom. This is very impressive master bathroom. What we have to do now is they are taking all the countertops off, all these sinks, are being removed. We might keep the sinks, and here's the situation, because <clears throat> we're not changing the cabinets. Typically, a vanity height in a bathroom is 36, which is where the sink's at. So this has been put down lower, so when we put a sink in here that drops in, now you have a shorter vanity than what you're used to. So those are some things we'll probably have to come back, either leave these sinks or come up with a new style. They don't like this. This is a very expensive a Kohler faucet. Um, look at that, it's kind of, it's like a pen. It's pretty far out. These, I'm sure they'll probably keep, but all the light fixtures come out. This huge mirror comes out, and what's interesting, it's all backlit, and all of this here, the tile, they don't like. It's also repeated in the master shower, which we have to remove, so. And then these light fixtures, all the light fixtures are coming out. This is all very expensive stuff, but wrong style. It's gotta go. Okay, finishing up the master bathroom tour, this big tub and these beautiful faucets, this is not a microphone, is getting removed. The tub actually is going back in its place. Let me see if I can get out of it. That's the hard part about these things, is once the, we gotta yank the tub out to get to the countertop or whatever, the edging of this, all this comes out and new goes in. This shower behind here is massive. This is, luckily it's just a sticker. We're gonna peel all that off. So now you'll have a full view for full Monty's. So when we pull this sticker off and someone's in the shower, you're in there for the world to see. I don't think we can show that on TV. This is a kid rated show. Let me show you what we have to do in the shower. When you get into the shower, this is kind of the towel drying off here, but this comes out and that comes out. The best part about this is it doesn't run in to where there's any uh, plumbing. The guy's got to come in and cut all this out just to come up with a different color. I think it looks nice, but nobody else does. It's big. Okay, this master closet, this thing has everything. It's all finished cabinetry, drawers, even your own washer dryer. I said washer, not washer. But what it's missing is a shoe rack, believe it or not. So we're gonna take this area here and incorporate some additional shoes. So that will maximize that space. I don't know what they're using that space for. So that will take care of the closet, a very simple fix. What this house has is a whole house lighting system. I put a few of them in. There's some pros and cons to that. So you have one button right here. You can turn on the master. You can say all off throughout the house. The pros and cons of this thing is these homes are so big that it's, you're not running all over the house turning on light switches. And uh, what I love about them is when you leave by the garage, you hit one button, all off or exit, and you can program it to where it might just leave a few lights on in the house. But we're all creatures of habit. Sometimes you walk up here and you want this thing just to do something something subconsciously like just turn on one or two lights and you have to think that ahead of time because it programs them for what you want like if you want an evening set you want to go to bed setting all those things so I find it's frustrating over time that sometimes you find yourself pushing all these buttons because it's not doing what you want that's why I'm not real crazy about these things Another part of the electrical that we have to replace and price out is all these panels here, cover plates, are all out of stainless steel. That's an easy fix. We're gonna change them to white, but the problem of it is all the actual plug, the box part, is gray. So we're getting a price to change out every single one of these in the house, and there are a bunch because you have to have these things in some spots about every six to 12 feet, so there are outlets everywhere that we're getting a price on. We're replacing light fixtures. This one here, gotta go. This one up here, it stays. 
Everything else goes. All right, this is one of two laundry rooms in the house. This is the main one right off the garage. I love these stackable washer dryers because you can maximize the square footage. So we, we're gonna add another cabinet above this. But what the homeowner wants to do, and I have not seen these, maybe you guys have, it's like a steam unit where you put your clothes in and it steam dries them. So we're gonna remove this cabinet right here. It's probably a good idea, but we gotta deal with the dryer vent. The builder, either they move the, the washer dryer or they just forgot to put the dryer vent. So we're gonna fix that for her. And you can even see in the closet, there's a few holes where they drilled trying to find the dryer vent. So this will get all tore out and something totally new built here. I'm waiting for the designers to come up with that. All right, guys, I'm wrapping up. So I hope you guys liked what I did. I'm gonna go back to my office. I gotta kind of go through my mind and look at my notes and start itemizing everything. Plus I've gotta start making phone calls to the various subcontractors, getting their price as an option. With that, I'll show you the favorite part of the lighting system. Right here, if I hit this lead button, all the lights should go out. And if I'm end up in the dark, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm Brad the Builder and I'll see you guys on the next job site. Supposed to work. This one. Why is it not working? Leave. Change. Do you see why I love these things? There it goes.